on station, and when they get to the exit, there's a big old sign that says, A&M left, right? A&M left. So they turned around and went home. Classic act. These are classic act. Thank you for recognizing. Classic. Okay, would you go that way and tell them he could start? Hey, Doc. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Methodist Church of Corsicana. We want to welcome all of our members and our guests here and at home and our visitors. And I guess the best thing to say is he is risen. Amen. Amen. That cross is empty. Our sins are forgiven. Not just ours, but all the billions of people who were here before us, who are here now, and who will be. And that brings such a peace that we know we're saved. Amen. That what else is there to worry about? We accept it, and God's love is greater than we could ever hope. So with that, I mean, we, we've got the spiritual world taken care of, so now I've got to do kind of the temporal world. And I'll start with food, because that's, that's really pretty good. And uh, tomorrow night, it's a men's night out, because the circles uh, one and three are meeting, and it's in Kearns at 6 p.m. I believe it's at the La Pradera, which was the Double D's. It'll be there at 6 p.m. And then, speaking of food, we have the Wednesday night supper, which is smothered steak. If you're deciding to come to that, please call the office tomorrow if you can and so make reservations. And last on the food is the Bible study breakfast at a late 6.30 in the morning unless you're cooking, like some do, and then it's like really zero dark 30s, they say in the military. So um, that's our food, and we have the regular yoga, we have everything going. And Okay, that, see, Sylvia, I, I was supposed to mention the Habitat, which is on April 13th, and I wasn't going to mention it because I wanted Sylvia to give me a, a sign, and she was supposed to stand up. The house thing, and she did it over there, but she now will not stand up because... She didn't want to. But anyway, uh, more information about that will be coming out. That's her over there, right there. So I'm, I'm, I'm not embarrassing anybody. But anyway, um, please check your bulletin. We have the beautiful Easter lilies here. This is, it's a magnificent day. And I believe it's time. Is it your turn or your turn? Both. Oh, both of them. Okay, we get a double, double um, surprise today. And welcome, everybody, and happy Easter.
One, thank you. Happy Easter, everyone. Would you please stand me and join me for opening him? The words will be on the monitors.
faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father. invite all the big kids to have a seat while all the little ones whether you're worshiping in person or online with us for a to come forward for a special time with Miss Lisa hey look at these beautiful young ladies oh my goodness all the pretty frocks and dresses hi there how are y'all doing everybody take an egg take an egg and pass it down we're going to talk about Easter eggs today. Why we why we use Easter eggs? Did you get one? You get an Easter egg? You can have one. Everybody gets an Easter egg. Yay! Oh my goodness! Did you get get an Easter egg? Okay. Okay. Everybody get an Easter egg? So far, so good. I love all these children. This is awesome. Yay. They're still coming. I'm going to grab an Easter egg. Okay. Did we get one? I love your bunny. Did you get an Easter egg? Here we go. Here we go. Can get an Easter egg? Look at these sweet littles. Just one. Grab an Easter egg. <laughs> we, we want in the basket. He's the Easter bunny. He wants to be the Easter bunny. Okay. Why do we have Easter eggs around Easter? Oh, no. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. We'll hide it. We'll stash it over here somewhere. Quick. Hide it under a quad rope. <laughs> Why do we celebrate and Jesus, the risen Christ, with an Easter egg? Did you get one? Did you? Okay, good deal. Does anybody know? Olivia. Um... I think the reason why we celebrate it is because, um, um, I forgot. <laughs> well, eggs stand for life. They mean when we, we have eggs, sometimes baby chicks come out of them. Sometimes we eat the eggs and that gives us some life, right? Because we have to have nourishment. Well, back in the olden days, the old, old, olden days, back when there was Robin Hood, that's something the big kids will remember, but maybe not some of you guys. Back in the olden days, people celebrated Lenten, or the season of Lent, by not eating eggs for how many days? Does anybody remember? Thank you. 40. For 40 days. Thank you, Nolan. Nolan remembered from Wednesday after school. So... For 40 days, back in the olden days, people didn't eat eggs. And they did this to honor Jesus. They did this to give up something they enjoyed. How many of y'all like to eat eggs? Do you, anybody like to eat eggs here? You don't, some of you don't like eggs. And that's okay. So I love eggs. So to give up eggs for 40 days would be difficult for me. I might not, I might not like to give up 40 eggs or 40 days of eggs that I might enjoy. So that's why it made it really special on Easter Sunday because we celebrate the risen Christ, we can eat eggs again. And that back in the day, someone said, well, why don't we make 
Easter eggs, kind of like Christmas. Why don't we decorate them? And that's how that tradition got started. It got started because we gave up eggs to show Christ we love him and we thank him for giving up himself so that we can have a place in heaven someday. Does that make sense? A little bit, a little bit. I see some nodding heads. Okay, good deal. So now you know why we have Easter eggs. Now you know why we, uh, we decorate them. It's because we celebrate Easter. We celebrate the risen Christ, which represents our new lives in Christ. Y'all, will y'all pray with me? Huddle up. Let's pray. Huddle up. Come on. Come on. Huddle up. Huddle up. Let's pray. Because they want it. The big kids love to hear you guys pray. You ready? Y'all help me? Help me? Okay. Dear Jesus, thank you for this for this day. For giving your life. Thank you for giving our life. Be saved. So we can be saved. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Your name. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black, and Jesus loves the little children of the world. Now, I would invite everyone to get up out of our seats and greet each other in the name of the Lord on this beautiful day. Happy Easter. Happy I'm going to go this side this time, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Happy Easter, again. <laughs> Stay standing um, with me for the next hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
Well, again, good morning. Happy Easter. We are so glad to have you in worship with us this day. I understand we're a little bit bulletin shy, so if you are a regular member, maybe you could pass that down to one of our guests and make sure that they have a bulletin. It has some, not only our order of worship, but some good information about activities and opportunities for you this week. We also want to welcome our, our online audience. We're proud to have you here. We regularly have uh, people that join us from, from Lafia and from the Philippines, and we say good morning and welcome. We're blessed to have you here. Let's go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Oh Lord, we come before you on this Easter morn with thanksgiving in our hearts because the tomb is empty and because you live, Lord, we live also. I thank you, Lord, for the abundant life which is ours through the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that uh, we are never alone, that uh, you are always with us. You are a present need in our times of great sorrow, and you are there in times of great joy, and we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to come and worship you on this special day. But may we live in the power of the resurrection all the days of our life. May we follow after you and your example of love so that when the world sees us, they see the resurrected Lord living in us in our words, in our deeds, in our thoughts. May you be glorified, O King of kings and Lord of lords. It's in your name we join together now in one voice as we lift up the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If the ushers would come forward at this time to receive our morning offering. Please stand with me.
Thank you. You may be seated. Because the Word of God is central to who we are and what we believe, we invite Ned to come and share with us in the reading of God's Word. And let me add, one of the greatest fishermen of our times. Good morning. We good morning. As you should know, the scripture read this morning is from the 28th chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For the fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised. As he said, come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, he has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you so that they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of God for the people of God.
Thank you so much, choir, Cindy and Amanda. And uh, our, our quartet, uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old, okay? I confess that to you. And um, my hearing is starting to wane a little bit. Uh, to be honest with you, most of the time, it's only when my wife Diane's talking to me and I act like I don't hear. But anyways, it, it has gone down a little bit. And uh, so uh, Dan wor warned me that you know he was going to be playing pretty loud. And listen, my ears are ringing. I, I, I have, I have, now I'm really thinking maybe I'm going deaf. I, I don't know. So, Diane, if I ignore you today, it's because of them, okay? That's what it is. I, I like the words of Pope John Paul II. He, uh, he wrote about Easter. He says, do not abandon yourself to despair. Boy, those words really hit me hard when I read them. Because I would wager to say that there are some of you sitting in our beautiful sanctuary this morning who are despairing. He goes on to say, we are Easter people. Boy, if we only understood the depth of the truth of that statement. And hallelujah is our song. You know, I don't know if it's just me or maybe some of you feel the same way, but boy, this Easter, I feel a little broken and a little hopeless. Yes, I know that's a strange thing for a pastor to confess, especially on Easter Sunday. I mean, look around and you see the world is in turmoil. You know, this last month we were supposed to be in Israel. We were going to go on a pilgrimage tour uh, from our church, and of course we had to cancel that. And I think of Easter Sunday in the holy city of Jerusalem, and um, it, it just breaks my heart. You know, there's, there's uncertainty about the future. If you don't agree with me on that, let me encourage you to turn on the evening news. No, let me encourage you not to do that. But, but even things like future pastoral changes in leadership, right? And this is just to name a few of the things that are going on in the world around me and in my life. You know, whatever the reason, it doesn't always feel to me like a victorious Easter Sunday. Maybe some of you are feeling that way. I was kind of thinking, I wonder how many of you were forced to get up this morning and come to church. But we're glad you're here. We're blessed you're here. We think this is an appointed time for you. I, I can almost feel like we're trapped on Good Friday. Jesus is crucified and dead and buried. And even though we've heard about Easter, we don't really understand fully or believe in the truth of, Christ, of Easter. Nothing could be further from the truth. If, if you, like me, are tempted to despair, let me remind you that we are called to be Easter people. And, and maybe we just need to take a couple of minutes to dwell on the meaning of that phrase, Easter people, and, and talk about a few Easter truths. So here's my first Easter truth for you. He's not there. He's risen, just as he said. When... Uh, my parents passed away a few years ago. Um, one of the things that I like to do is I, I like to go to the cemetery every once in a while, and especially my father's grave. He's buried over here at Point Enterprise in Mahaya, and or Mahaya, however you want to say that. And uh, I like to put out some some flowers for him. But I, I just like to remember, make sure that the that the grave is is clean and that sort of thing. My mom is, is buried in Kempner. I don't really get to see her go over there very often. But I'll, I'll say to Diane when we're, we're doing this, i say, hey, you want to go by and, and see your mom and dad and your grandma's grave? And she always says, no. And I thought, well, man, that, that's kind of cold. Why don't, why don't you want to go and, you know, 
visit your parents' graves. She goes, oh, they're not there. I don't need to go by and say anything to them. You know, there's a truth in that. There's a reality in that. There are over 300 Old Testament prophecies that Jesus fulfilled during his time on earth. Jesus repeatedly predicted his own death and resurrection to his disciples during his earthly ministry. There's one in Mark 9, 30 through 31. The reason I, I chose this one is because it's Jesus predicts his death a second time. Not the first time. This is the second time that he's told his disciples that he's going to be turned over, he's going to be crucified, he's going to be buried. But on the third day, he will come back. He's not there. And this is what it reads in Mark 9, 30. They left the place and passed through the Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples and he said to them, the Son of Man, in other words, Jesus, is going to be delivered into the hands of the men and they will kill him and after three days he will rise. So he told them what was about to take place. But when you look at the stories... They don't seem to understand it. You remember Peter? What did Peter do? He denied. He knew Jesus three times. Remember Judas? Judas betrayed Jesus. There's a wonderful story of Emmaus where the men are, are walking back to the village of Emmaus uh, after the crucifixion of Jesus. And, and they're walking along and this figure appears. They don't know that it's the resurrected Lord. And, and they say, hey, you know, what are you doing? He says, Have you not heard of the events that happened in Jerusalem concerning Jesus, and, and, and they go on, and, and they're talking about this thing, but they're going home because it's done. It's finished with. There is no hope. They, they, they heard Jesus say he was coming back, but like many of us, oh, I don't know. We, we just want to doubt. Can't really be true. There's no reality in it. They were just words that he said to make us feel better, right? You know, what does it matter? You know, one of the things that I've discovered in my life anyways, and even more so on this day than any other day, Jesus has been keeping his word for a long time. Amen? Jesus has been keeping his word for a long time. You would think after all the miracles the disciples watched that they would have been anxiously awaiting for his resurrection on Easter Sunday, but they weren't. They weren't. But like us, they looked at their present reality and they started to doubt his power. They, like us, forgot Jesus' words and promises. Now, we, we read in Matthew 28, 6, it says, when the women found the empty tomb on Easter, the Bible says that they were, they were confused and frightened. Maybe that's the way some of us feel. I, I want to point out something. I didn't put this in my notes, but I feel compelled compelled to share it with you this morning. It was the women who went to go and prepare Jesus. And it was the women who encountered the resurrected Lord first. And forgive us, women, sometimes in the church we make you feel like second-class disciples, and there's nothing further from the truth. Amen? Amen? It's the women who found the empty tomb the Bible says they were confused. And then the angel reminded them, he is not here. He is risen. And catch this last part, just as he said. Listen, my friends, God is trustworthy. When God makes a promise, you could count on it. You could bank on it. It is true. You could hold on to it. And even though I'm prone to doubt, Jesus keeps his promises you know, I wonder what other promises of God that we've forgotten. How about John 16, 33, where Jesus is encouraging disciples about his coming death and resurrection. And he says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. Wow, what powerful words. I wonder who's sitting here this morning that just is longing for a little peace in their life. Man, your, your life is in so much turmoil, maybe in so much pain, so much uncertainty, and, and you just want to scream at the top of your lungs, peace, be still. Just, just to have a moment where you feel like you could breathe. He says, in the world, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. You know, I wonder why there's so much turmoil in the world. And I have an answer for that. 
there's so much turmoil in the world, world is because we have forgotten the promises of Jesus. We don't live by his commandments. We don't proclaim the good news the way we used to, the way we are called to, the way we are commissioned to. But then he says, listen, for those of you that are struggling this morning, he says, take heart, take heart, because I've overcome the world. And because Christ is alive and his resurrection power living in you, let me tell you, my friends, you can face the trials and the tribulations and the brokenness of life and be more than overcomers. Amen? Isn't that powerful? If you're weary today, I want to encourage you to look up a list of God's promises and be refreshed and be renewed. I think the second thing we need to remember, <coughs> excuse me, as we come to this Easter Sunday, the empty tomb is just the beginning. Just the beginning. You know, I, I think for, as Christians, we sometimes think of Christmas as being the beginning of our faith journey, but it's really Easter. Um, Easter is actually the beginning of our Christian walk. Because Jesus lives, and because he, he lived a miraculously sinless life, his death paid the debt for all of our sin and transgressions. Now, a death so powerful and victorious that it threw open the doors to a direct connection with God because that's what God desires. That, that's his greatest desire. I can tell you what his, his greater desire is, is you. You. He loves you. He wants to be in relationship with you. And, and so... No more blood sacrifices or priestly meditations. On Easter Sunday, death is swallowed up in victory. Now, I don't know what that means for you, but let me tell you what it means for me. I have to confess to you, I'm still mourning the death of my brother. My brother passed away a year tomorrow. And uh, I tell you what, man... Um, I miss him. It doesn't, it doesn't really feel right in my life since he passed away. But the promises of God, the power of the resurrection tells me, it reminds me that one day I'll be face to face again with my brother. We, we call that heaven, right? That, that's what we're talking about. One day, my friends we will see all our suffering. We, we will see the Savior face to face and all our suffering will fade away. And we will fall on our knees in gratitude and worship. We'll look into the eyes of the Savior and see the kindness and the strength and the truth we, we've only previously known through prayer and study. Just dwell on that for a second. There's an author, I don't read her very well, but I, I, I like what she has to say, and, and I sometimes take her, her quotes. Uh, Carissa Mole, some of you might know her, a, a powerful theologian, and she, she points out that Jesus' empty tomb is just the first of many more empty tombs. Did you hear that? And I wonder, I wonder who is sitting in here this morning like me who's grieving the loss of a loved one, someone precious, I wonder who's sitting here this morning whose heart hurts because, man, they're not present at the Easter table. They're not there for birthdays. They're not there for Thanksgiving. They're not there for Christmas. She goes on to say, his resurrection is the beginning of all the good that is yet to come. Now, I don't know about you, but that gives me great hope. Amen? The, the resurrection gives us hope that the day may not be the best day, but listen, every day is not going to be a good Friday. Easter is coming. The light is going to shine. The world one day will be made right. And until that time, you and I have work to do to proclaim the good news of the resurrection to the world around us so that people might have hope. I, I think the last thing that we need to remember this Easter is Jesus left earth to give us something better, the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I taught in Sunday school this morning. I, I, I'm really not a very deep student when it comes to the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of things I understand. There's a lot of things I'm still trying to learn. But let, let me give you an example of, of what I mean. Uh, we, we had a fan in our bedroom not too long ago. And I walked over to it. It was not running. And I turned the switch. And nothing happened. So I played with the switch. Why we think if we do it three or four times, maybe something would change. I don't know, but I'm sitting there playing with the switch. And so I decided I would take it out into the garage and tinker with it. Okay? Men, you know what I'm talking about, right? So I proceeded to take that fan apart, and I just pulled it apart. Now, why in the world do they put all those extra parts in those gadgets? I have no idea. Because uh, I looked at it, everything looked good to me. Not that I'd ever seen the inside of a fan one time in my life, right? But it all looked good to me. I mean, there was nothing sticking out or broken that I could see, except for there was a little small pile of extra stuff off to the side, right? And I thought, well, we must not need that because I put everything back in there. It looks good to me, right? And so I, I was proud of myself. I went over and I plugged it into the wall. And I went over to the fan, click. Absolutely nothing. Click, click. Absolutely nothing. So I thought, oh, well, it's broken. So I picked it up, and see, I had to go through that process to determine it was broken. I picked it up. It's good out to the trash can. I threw it away. And a little bit later, Diane comes in. She goes, hey, where's the fan in our bedroom? And I was like, well, it wasn't working, so I decided to work on it which is kind of an oxymoron if you think about it. And I decided to work on it a little bit, and so uh, it wasn't working, so I just threw it away. And she said, what do you mean it's not working? I said, well, I, I turned the switch and nothing happened. And so she said, well, did you plug it in? Ooh. <sighs> Man, I love her, but sometimes she just gets on my very last nerve. I'm going to tell you, this... Uh, this Plug it in. What do you mean plug? Yeah, she had unplugged it earlier. She was doing something, moving, clean, and doing something. And no, but let me tell you, if you are not plugged in, you are not working right. And that's why there's so much turmoil in your life. If you're not plugged in to the power of the Holy Spirit, then you're going to live in brokenness all the days of your life. Amen? It's true. It's true. If you're not plugged in, you're not going to have power in your life. And I guarantee you, there's many of you sitting here this morning who are feeling so weak that you don't know if you have the strength to carry on another day. Pastor Matt preached at Sunrise Service today. He did an amazing job. <clears throat> One of the things he talked about was uh, the tremendous suicide rate among young people in our society today. And it overwhelms me. If you ever doubt the importance of Matt's job, then don't do it anymore. Because you know what he is? He's a pastor, but he's really a lifeguard. He's trying to save people. And uh, you know, the reason so many people commit suicide, I'm not an expert, but I'll tell you what I know, is because they feel like there's no hope. They are in the depth of despair to the point where they feel like there is no need to carry on anymore. I wonder if there's any of you who are feeling that this morning. And let me tell you, the answer to that is Jesus. Get plugged into him. Man, you, you will find power. You will find a newness in life. You will find a strength. You will find a purpose. You will find a meaning for your life like you have never felt before. And it doesn't mean every day is going to be a good day and there's not going to be hard days ahead of you. But because Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Because Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow. I, I, I know that he's going to be with me wherever I might be. L let me tell you one other quick story here. Um, I, I, there were times in my life when I, I have just really walked into Jesus, you know, bumping into Jesus. It's not that Jesus shows up. I just maybe was not aware that he was there. But many years ago, I, I, I went to England. I had some family. My mom was from England. And I, I went to Salisbury Cathedral. Some of you may have visited. It's beautiful. Southern part 
of, of England, first cathedral I'd ever been to, medieval cathedrals, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And uh, I, I got up on a bus, I went in, I got there before the doors opened, there was a small crowd gathered. They don't, they don't take you in the main doors, those are reserved for royalty and dignitaries and other things. They take you in kind of a nondescript side door. So they open the doors and the Anglican priests were there to greet us and we walked in. And, and you walk in and you, you take a, a turn uh, to, uh, to the west and there's this enormous giant nave. It was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen in my entire life. There, there weren't beautiful stained glass windows like in our church uh, because uh, later in the English Reformation, there were people who felt that the church needed to be purified. They called it Puritans. And, and so they believed that the images, the stained glass was contrary to the word of God. And so they took it out. They, they busted it. You know what they used it for, by the way? These works of art. Road fill. Road fill. That's what they used it for. So it's kind of a bluish light. I remember that. I don't know why. And we were there for this a very short time. And the organ started to play back up in the choir loft. And there was a choir there. And they were singing. And some people were singing solos. They were re rehearsing for an upcoming service. And man, the Holy Spirit just came upon me. And I just felt the presence of God. It, it was amazing. I've never felt that way in my entire life. And and it was so good that I didn't want to leave. And so I found an excuse to stay there literally all day long. I don't remember eating lunch or anything. I took every single tour they had. And then there was an announcement. It's time to close. It was probably about 6 o'clock at night. And I was like, what? No, 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 no. I don't want to leave Jesus. No, this is good. I haven't, I haven't experienced this. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And it was very good. And the young priest was like, yes, but you, you've got to leave now. And I'm like, oh, can't, can't we just stay open for a few more minutes? I mean, come on, what's it going to matter? And they're like pushing me towards the door. And then I heard the door slam behind me. Now, I, I don't know if this is true, but I could picture those two priests with their back to the door saying, I'm wondering if he's still there. And one of them saying, well, just open the door a little bit and see if he's there. And the other one say, no, 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 don't open the door because he'll try to rush right back in if you, if you open the door. But it was, so, it was so amazing. I remember when I got home, uh, we didn't have cell phones. I know that's a shock to the young people in here. You know, no cell phones. And I'll make it even worse. Uh, we had, my first TV was a black and white TV and it had three channels. That was it. No, I know, hold your heart, no internet, right? So I get home and my uncle, he, he comes to the door, I know he's upset, and he goes, where have you been? And I said, man, I have been walking in the presence of the Lord. And he wasn't a religious man, and I'm sure he thought, but this boy is loony too. You know, you know, something's wrong with him. But that's what the Holy Spirit does. Jesus says, hey, I'm going to give you a spirit. I'm going to give you a power. In the beginning of John 16, 7, Jesus shares part of the answer. He says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It, it, is, it is to your advantage that I go away. If I don't go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. You know, living on this side of the resurrection, I don't know what life is like without the Holy Spirit. Man, isn't it an interesting concept to think about? I don't claim to be an expert of the Holy Spirit, but it, to take Jesus at his word is to believe that having the Holy Spirit is an awesome gift that comes to you through Easter. The Holy Spirit is ever-present, leading, guiding. You know, discernment is such a hard gift. It really truly is. And I know that some of you are discerning pathways in your life, big decisions, big decisions. I know there's some, some babies that are going to be coming to this congregation before too long. Big decision. I know some of you are contemplating moves to a foreign country like New York State. <laughs> big decisions. Big decisions, right? But the Holy Spirit is ever-present, leading, guiding we just have to be attuned to the Spirit and the power that it gives us so that we can live as more than overcomers. I, I, I like this, one of my favorite scriptures. And, and it tells us, you know, is there, is there anything that's not possible with God? Is there anything in your life that you and God together cannot face today or tomorrow or in the living of your life? 
It's amazing that the Holy Spirit is working in your life. So this Easter, if you're weary, if you're broken, I want to remind you of the truth and hope in the present reality of the resurrection. Our hope isn't in squeezing all the goodness or achievement or recognition we can out of this life. Thank God for the fullness of life that he gives us, though. In the resurrection, I find hope. I affirm the words of that old hymn that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. And my friends, because he lives, no matter what you're going through right now, no matter. Is that what that means? Oh, Matt Spector, sit down, preacher. That, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty mean, guys. I just want to tell you. Okay? Okay. Take you off my Christmas card list. Anyways, I could find hope. Because he lives, I can live. I, I have hope that one day we'll all join Jesus in heaven. One day I'm going to hug my daddy's neck. One day I'm going to get to see my brother. And we will be in glory forever. Singing praises to the resurrected Lord. I believe one day, hear me now, church, all that is broken will be made right. All that is ugly in this world, and man, there is a lot of darkness and ugly in this world. I believe one day it will all be mended. And one day, one day, we will live in the light of his love, and we will have peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. So we come to the close of our service. Not yet, Matt. In a few more minutes. Okay. Uh, and this is always a time of invitation. Maybe, maybe you don't know the Lord and, and you want to know this Lord Jesus. We, we invite you to come. Matt, Pastor Matt's here. I'm going to ask him to come forward in a few minutes. And, and listen, we are, we'll pray for you. It's a very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Uh, you be the Lord of my life, the resurrected Lord. We believe when you do pray that prayer, Jesus comes in your heart. The power of the resurrection begins at that very moment. Okay? We believe that. We believe that's done through baptism. We believe it's important to be connected to a church. Uh, we, we believe that to be in fellowship with one another is metal sharp and metal. And I know some of you are feeling dull today. And maybe what you need is some Jesus sharpness. That's pretty good, isn't it? I just made that up. I'm going to coin that. None of you could use that. Some Jesus sharpness in your life. I know I do. However God speaks to you as we stand together and sing our closing hymn. Please join me in singing hymn number 257, He Lives. We will sing the first and last verses.
and live in the power of the resurrection, live in the hope not only of today but tomorrow, live in the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you and proclaim with a loud voice of victory. I can do all things. I can face every situation. <laughs> Through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you all.